Hey guys, and welcome back to our channel. In today's video, we are gonna be talking about how to set up your hamster's enclosure. Now the first thing, of course, is you're gonna need an enclosure. We wanna make sure we have a large hamster cage because just because hamsters are small animals does not mean they can be put into small cages. They have a lot of energy and they need a lot of room to do their natural behaviors. Now, the first thing we're gonna to wanna to put into our hamster's cage is a substrate, and this needs to be a safe substrate because hamsters are burrowers, so they are going to need something to burrow in. We are gonna to wanna to use a safe option, such as paper-based bedding, aspen wood shavings, hemp shavings. We are going to want to avoid any softwood shavings, cedar shavings, pine shavings, any scented beddings, as well as we don't wanna use fleece because once again, hamsters need to be able to burrow. So we're gonna wanna make sure we put a lot of depth in our hamster's cage because they need to be able to burrow, not just dig, because those aren't the same things. For a minimum, I would recommend having at least six inches in a section, and a lot of hamsters actually have been found to not start burrowing until they've been given at least 10 inches or more. The next thing you're gonna to wanna to put into your hamster's cage is a hideout. This is really important because this gives your hamster a place to feel safe, protected, have their own privacy, go to sleep in. You can have multiple hideouts in the enclosure so your hamster can pick and choose. The one I have in the video here is just a multi-chamber hideout and this kind of just mimics how a hamster would live in the wild. The next thing you're going to need in your hamster's cage is a wheel. This is super important. And we're gonna to wanna to make sure we have a safe hamster wheel. We wanna avoid using anything that has wire or mesh, and it needs to be a suitable size. For dwarf hamsters, I would recommend a wheel of eight inch or larger. And for Syrians and Chinese hamsters, I recommend 10 to 12 inches. Remember, you can never have too big of a wheel. The bigger, the better, and the less likely to hurt your hamster. The next thing you're gonna to wanna to put into your hamster's cage is a sand bath. This is really important because hamsters can't be bathed in water. Water can have some negative effects on hamsters, so sand is the best way to go. Sand helps hamsters remove any excess oils on their coats as well. It gives them another texture to dig in. Make sure you have a big sand bath so that they're able to actually move around in it, as well as I would recommend putting a hideout or some type of covering on it because a hamster will be more likely to use the sand bath if they feel safe and kind of hidden. Another thing is, yes, a lot of hamsters use their sand baths as their potty, which in my opinion is fine. It just makes spot cleaning the enclosure just a little bit more easier. Of course, we're gonna need some sand to fill our bath sand with. You can use safe options such as children's play sand, chinchilla bathing sand, or reptile sand without any added calcium or dyes. We are gonna to wanna to avoid things like chinchilla bath dust or critter bath powder or hamster powder as these can cause our hamsters to develop respiratory infections. Next is the fun part and that is putting in our accessories and toys. You can pick a variety of accessories and toys for your hamster's cage. I personally go with more natural products such as cork logs and grapevine wood and a lot of different tubes. These kind of mimic the textures a hamster would naturally be walking on and touching, but you can use plastic items and a lot of other hamster toys and accessories. Just make sure they are going to fit the species you've chosen. You really don't want your hamster getting stuck in anything too small for them. Another thing that I would recommend is making your cage semi-crowded. Now, when we're using a large cage, we don't wanna to have too much open space because hamsters are prey animals, so we don't want them to feel unsafe or out in the open and just not wanna come out. So we want to kind of fill it up with a lot of the accessories, have a lot of spots where there's little nooks and crannies for them to hide in, go under, things like that, so they feel a lot safer in their enclosure. Of course, don't, crowd it so much that your hamster literally can't walk, but make it semi-crowded.
Next, we're gonna need some chew toys because hamsters have continuously growing teeth, so they need something to gnaw on, something that's natural. Remember that a hamster chewing on metal bars is not a natural behavior and it's not them trying to wear down their teeth. It means they're stressed. There are a variety of different types of chew toys out there. I recommend just buying a bunch of different types and seeing which your hamster likes the best. Next, you're gonna need a food and water source. You can use a food dish or you can also scatter feed your hamster. That just allows them to get more enrichment as well as you can use a water dish or you can use a water bottle. Either option is fine. The next thing that I like to add into my enclosures and I recommend others to add into their enclosures because it helps provide the hamster with a little bit more enrichment is some hamster safe dried herbs as well as some soft hay. Herbs are great because they have great natural properties as well as they're great for foraging and soft hays like orchard grass hay and botanical hay both make for making burrows stable. It also allows the hamster to use it as some nesting if they want to. Just remember, don't use any rough haze like Timothy hay. This can end up with your hamster getting poked in the eye or poking their cheek pouch, which we don't want. And that is the gist of setting up a hamster's enclosure. I hope this video was helpful and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.